If you're into PCs, I've got the ultimate desktop setup for you. And if you like Macs, this just may change your mind. I'm John P. Welcome to Geek. This episode of Geekbeat is brought to you by lynda.com. Okay guys, today I'm gonna show you two of my favorite products in the world, bar none, in one big review, because I think they go together really, really well. So we're gonna start off, and I'm gonna tell you about this HP Z1, which is the second generation of their 27-inch all-in-one computer system. And then we're gonna talk about these KEF 300 uh, series Wi-Fi speakers. So to start with, let's go at the uh, Z1 here. Now, I have reviewed the previous version of this Z1 and I found it to be one of the best PCs ever made. In a minute, I'm gonna show you the super secret sauce of how you open this thing and get to the guts, which makes it really good. But before we get to it, I've got a little cheat sheet here. I wanna go through some of the uh, key points for this thing. First of all, let's just get the basics out of the way. It is a 27 inch, but it comes in two different models of screen. You can get a matte finish that is not a touch screen, or you can get a touch screen, but you'll notice uh, it's a little bit uh, glossy. So I really like the, the touch functionality to the screen, um, and you can very easily manipulate things. It is a 10 finger touch screen. So if we put something up here that has um, uh, multiple you know, touch finger capabilities, you can see that it'll do things like uh, it says it's zooming and it's changing the angle and uh, stuff like that. So it's very uh, easy to use and I like the screen a lot. Uh, secondly, with the original G2, I found it to be a very quick you know, speedy computer, very uh, responsive, good for workstation use, but it had one little Achilles heel, which is that you couldn't get access to quick external storage. Now they have solved that. You get two Thunderbolt ports on this thing. And what's really cool is HP is the only PC manufacturer that's actually got Thunderbolt ports on it. That's nice because you can plug in de devices and daisy chain up to six different uh, Thunderbolt devices on there. Now, they do also offer support on either Windows 7 or 8.1 for Thunderbolt. So not just 8.1 if you choose to, to run the older OS, no problem there. Um, as far as speed is concerned, this thing has the latest Haswell processors available to it. It has uh, the 1600 megahertz speed RAM in there, and you can really load this bad boy up. It also has um, the ability to have both either regular drives or SSD drives in here, and they also include an M SATA drive. So that means when you want to uh, you know, load up your operating system, it will boot very quickly from the M SATA drive. And then if you wanna have a lot of storage, you can put those on the regular drives. Now, before I show you a little bit of kind of how the workflow situation goes here, let's crack this baby open um, and see how easy it is to manipulate it. So first of all, this 27 inch screen will just rotate down. You just grab a hold of it from the top and the bottom and you just kind of lean it backwards here. Then there are two switches right here. We're gonna clip those. And now you're supposed to turn it off before you do this, but I always routinely open it up and it's never hurt anything. So when we look in here, uh, you're gonna see we've got four different memory slots so we can load that bad boy up. Back here, we've actually got uh, the M SATA drives. That's a 250, uh, 256 gig drive that we've got in that one. That's gonna really speed things up. We've also got a two terabyte Barracuda drive in here. So you can put a really fast, big hard drive internally and then use that one for speed. 
You'll also notice that we've got the latest, uh, we've still got the sticker on this bad boy, the latest little NVIDIA Quadro card, although that's not the little one because these are available in either the K610, the K2100M, the 3100M, or the 4100M series. One other neat little uh, detail is that on the previous generation, the keyboard, which I've never been a huge fan of, but I gotta admit it's grown on me a little bit. It's still not my favorite keyboard, but it works, okay? But the keyboard has a dongle to connect with the computer. They've actually located a USB uh, a plug inside so you could keep that little dongle inside. That way it's not sticking out all the time. I like that a lot. And the other thing, I'm not gonna do it right now, but you'll notice there's little green kind of markings on these little various handles in here. If I needed to swap out this uh, fan or this hard drive, if I just squeeze that, we will pop this thing out and instantaneously be able to shove another one back in there. So I really, really like that. It's one of my favorite features on this computer. So to keep, to, to get going with it again, it's, it kind of has a soft touch there. We'll squeeze it so it kind of clips together and then point it back the way we want it. I love the way that works. Um, also, if we come back around to the front here and take a look at it now, you're gonna notice that they've hidden a little webcam in there, but now this is Callie's favorite feature. There is a little knob here, and if I point it downward, you can see that there's a little bit of red right in there, which lets me know that it's not pointing at me. It's safe, you, you, you feel, you have privacy when that's going on. One of the other things too, you know, it's important to talk about how the machine feels when you're using it. So personally, uh, when I use this machine, I, it's got uh, a very nice feel in terms of its responsiveness, whatever you're doing. Um, it, here I've got Autodesk Sketchbook Pro open, and if I want to manipulate this thing, I could, I could draw with my finger on the screen. I could use a mouse to do the same thing. Or if you're into tablets, I've got a Wacom tablet here and we could, we could do the same thing with the Wacom. Well, if I have it writing properly. So you've got multiple ways of manipulating that data. Um, the other thing too is the way that this system will integrate with these speakers. So I just want to talk a little bit about that before we get into the speakers. The speakers connect to this thing via USB and once they are connected, you get amazing sound. So my, my de facto standard test here is uh, I'm on a boat, so we gotta, we gotta take a look at that for a second here. And we do have the clean version, by the way, that's always nice. But um, we can turn it up with the uh, volume on the keyboard here. And of course, the other amazing thing about these speakers, which we're about to get into, is that they are wireless as well. So if we wanted to, we can use our iPad over here to take over the speakers by playing the music straight off the iPad. So that's a really nice feature to be able to listen to one thing and switch back and forth between the two. And we can pause this over here and it'll go back to playing over here. You know, one of the other things that you learn when you're doing this is you can log into lynda.com and you can learn a million different things. They actually have, check it out, 2,518 video courses now. And if you head over to lynda.com forward slash geekbeat, you get seven days free. You can learn how to do drawing, like with sketchbook. You can learn Photoshop. You can learn engineering techniques. You can learn all kinds of stuff. So head on over there and check that out. Meanwhile, let's get to these speakers. Let's get back to these speakers because I want to talk to you about how they connect. First of all, um, these speakers have a lot of different options for getting um, sound in and out of them. 
you'll notice that we've got a USB cable here connected between this speaker, the left speaker, and the computer. And then we've got another USB cable that is actually going through our desk and comes over into the right speaker. So that's how we're getting both our left and right speakers paired together. We've also got a little balance knob so we can, if let's say you happen to have a situation where you were further away from one speaker than another, we could uh, adjust the balance so that you hear them perfectly. You're also gonna notice a big old heat sink on the back of each one of these speakers and power coming to each one. That's because they have two different amps in each of these speakers. There's a 50 watt amp for the mid bass unit and then there is a 20 watt amp for the tweeter. Um, there's also one other switch that's interesting on this back uh, of this one. It's a switch for either being mounted on a stand or a desk because it basically has a custom tuned equalizer that uh, you know, changes the way it sounds depending on where you're sitting on it. We've also got an ethernet port here. So we can plug it into the LAN, but if you don't use the ethernet port, you can, hop, you can plug into your Wi-Fi network, which is what we've got going on. So the way that this was working with my iPad taking over the music from the uh, Z1 here, uh, it's all connected onto our Wi-Fi network. Um, in order to configure these speakers, there is, Kev puts out a little app. So you can get it for Mac or you can get it for Windows. You stick these, you plug these things in and run the app. It goes right through the configuration setup, puts it on the wireless network and bam, that's it. You're done. These speakers also feature Kef's high-end UniQ uh, driver setup, which you can see puts the, the tweeter right in the middle of the woofer in essence. So we've got this exterior cone and you notice it goes back and forth with the tweeter in the center. And that allows you to get all your sound essentially from one space instead of um, having a tweeter up here and a mid-range down here or a mid-bass unit down at the bottom and not quite uh, getting the sound coming from the same exact direction. Let me see if I'm missing anything here for you guys. Uh, it does run on 802.11b or G. I don't have it in the notes, but one thing I recall is it's running on a 2.4 gigahertz wireless network, not a five gigahertz. So just be aware of that depending on how, what kind of network you have deployed in your house. Other than that, let's talk about pricing a little bit here. These are not cheap components, but they are absolutely best of breed. These Kef speakers, they're the, they're, the model number is the X300AWs. Now they make them in two models. They make the X300A and the X300AW. The W, although these are white, doesn't stand for white. It stands for wireless. However, they come in either white or black. You'll know that if you ever see the white ones, they're the wireless ones. Those go for $9.99. You can get them on Amazon right now, Ship Prime, and they are absolutely amazing. You can, if you want to opt for the version that doesn't do the wireless, so you can't sync it with a DLNA or um, AirPlay uh, source, you just play it through your computer, that'll save you 200 bucks. Those are $7.99. Now back to the Z1, this computer starts at around $2,000 if you get it um, in, the, in its most basic model. The way we have ours equipped, which is loaded to the hilt, it runs about $5,000. But we have been able to edit video on this thing just like it was a desktop computer. Uh, I mean like a tower workstation kind of computer because it is a real workstation. And um, you could have probably optioned it down in the maybe $3,000, $3,500 price range and still really get a lot of good use out of it, plus all of that um, extra serviceability. And the fact that these are HP workstations means that they come with a three-year warranty instead of just a one or two-year warranty like some other uh, com computers would come with. Last thing that I will tell you is this. If you have a monitor mounting arm, 
this thing is visa mountable. I'm not sure if we can actually see the, yeah, I think we have to take this little pl plate off back here. But if you take this thing off, we could visa mount this on a mounting arm so that you could get it off the little stand and have a lot more movement and movability. Personally, that's the way I would like to do it. I'd like to see this on a nice big arm so it could be moved easily with my big Kef speakers right here, blasting I'm on a boat, and that's it. There's nothing better in life than this setup right here. So you guys go get you one. Hope that was helpful. If you have other questions about either of these units, please drop them in the notes below or tweet me at John Pose, and I will get right back to you on them. Okay, that's it for this episode. Thumbs up on YouTube. I'm out of here, guys. I got to get back to my music. <laughs> <laughs>